Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for clicking play. It is episode four of Proyecto Libertadores, our Football Manager 2019 series with Estudiantes de la Plata. And today, the Superliga de Argentina kicks off with a derby against our city rivals at Gymnasia. So what we're going to do today, we've got a couple of bits of transfer news to catch up on. We're just going to have a look at the um, at the league table, uh, well, the league as a whole, um, and then we'll be right into the game. So first off, let's have a look at the... Um, at the, the season preview for the Superliga Argentina. Um, as you can see, we are predicted to finish 8th, which, quite frankly, I'd be, I'd be reasonably happy with in a 26-team division. Uh, it would put us in the Copa Sudamericana again for next series uh, for next season, and of course the whole, the whole object of this series is for us to become the dominant team and to win La, uh, the Copa Libertadores um, not just once, but multiple times. Uh, but, of course, we have to build up to that. We have to become one of the dominant teams in Argentina. And as you can see, the top three or four, even five clubs, are huge, huge clubs. Of course, you've got Boca and River in there, Independiente, Ratting Club, San Lorenzo, uh, Lanús, Rosario Central. Um, teams around us, Vélez, Sarsfield, Newell's Old Boys. Um, you know, it's a tough, tough... I mean, I've... That's that's the ten teams, you know, including ourselves. That is the top ten predicted. I mean, that is a massive group of teams that we've got to ascend and get above to become dominant. I want to become dominant in Argentina as well as in South America. So it is hopefully a series for the long haul. If you are enjoying it, um, remember to smash that like button at some point and also subscribe as well. Uh, if you haven't seen the series so far, the links are down below or you can um, jump into the most recent episode where we kicked off our Copa Sudamericana campaign against Blooming. So that is uh, also there for you to watch. But right now, let's just have a quick look at the games that we have played since that blooming game. Uh, we had a game against Comunicaciones Argentina, uh, a friendly. We won 4 1. Latanzio, Juan Sejos, Luca Rodriguez, and an own goal got us the win there. But then we went away again to Deportivo Merio and we lost 1-0 and it was a very poor game. Uh, goal nine minutes from time. Doesn't really matter, it's a friendly. It was all about the fitness. You can see we lost Rodrigo Brania and Matias Pellegrini to injury in that game. Neither one of those will be playing in this match. So it is Gymnasia today, our city rivals. Um, and it, it, it should be a really good match um i didn't actually notice where did it have them placed to finish where are they where are they where are they? they're placed to finish 17th so we're going into the game as favorites we should be winning it but we'll have to uh well we have to get it done on the pitch don't we games aren't won on paper so let's let's make sure we get it done what we're going to do now then let's have a quick look at our transfer business um we Managed to get the Santiago Naguel transfer over the line that I showed you him in the last video. Fortunately, he isn't fit today. He is. Um, he played for one of the reserve teams, I think. So he's not. He's not fit to play today. Uh, we've also brought in a couple of other players. Gaspar Iniguez, uh, centre midfielder, because we're a little bit light there. It has to be said. He's not going to pull up trees. He's on loan from Udinese. Um, he's also been at Tigre, um, Granada. Started out at Argentinos, where he's made most of his appearances so far. Looks half decent. His passing's good. Uh, he's reasonably quick. Uh, his work rate, his teamwork are excellent. Um, so I think he could be a good addition to the midfield. Um, as I say, he's not going to be a first team, uh, first choice starter, but... He's going to be an important part of the team, as I think. Um, and we saw in the last video, didn't we, Leonardo Piscolici, a uh, 34-year-old. He's not going to be able to play game after game after game after game because he's 34 and his physicals are going down. So we did have to try and find uh, some backup for him. And we came across this guy, Gaston Paiva. Now, he is uh, he's injured at the minute, unfortunately. He's out for, well, it says, between 12 days and four weeks. It's a bit of a difference there, isn't it, between 12 days and four weeks. That's just 
stupid. Um, but he looks really good. Uh, he was another one whose contract at uh, Cerro de Porteño in, I think they're Uruguayan, aren't they? It was his... Um, his contract was running out in December, I think it was. Uh, you got some funny contract expiries in Argentina. So top tip, if you do manage in South America, get on those expiring contract players immediately because a lot of contracts in Argentina and possibly South America as a whole run out in December. So be wary of that if you do start a game and get in there early and start searching for those players. Because look at this guy. Um, a bit like the, uh, the Jonier Viveros transfer, uh, we arranged it, we got it all sorted for end of his contract and then the option came in to buy him and it was for 30 grand. Uh, it's just a no-brainer, isn't it? So he's come in, he's worth 775,000. He looks really, really good. I can't wait to get him fit and get him in the team because I think he's going to be a real, real asset. 24 years of age, I think he's going to be one of those players that we make a ridiculous profit on. Our hosts today are playing a 4-4-1-1. Uh, it's a little asymmetrical in midfield there, isn't it, with the Rosales a little bit further forward than Mello. Um, Leto and Conquer up front. I'm pretty familiar with both of those names. I think I've come across them before. We've restored Mariano and Duha to the, um, the goalkeeping position today. And we've got Evangelista, Campi, Naguera, Rosales at the back with Laba and Estevez in midfield. And then it's Luca Rodriguez, Pisculici, Sejas and Mario Arno Pavoni comes in to start today. Um, you know, just by virtue of the fact that he scored immediately after coming off the bench against Blooming. On the bench, we have our debutante Iniguez, um, as well as Johnny Shunker, uh, Carlo Latanzio, um, and a very exciting young player in Diego Veron. I'm not sure if he's related to. Juan Sebastian, I haven't checked on that yet. I must get to that because I've got a feeling he might be. So we are going to say today, um, let's give let's give the fans something to cheer because it's a derby. The, it's all about the fans. The fans are desperate for a win to kickstart the season, uh, to kick off the season even. But at that, you know, it, it's at the home of your city rivals. You've got to go out there. You've got to get that win, haven't you? Um, so let's see if we can do it. The game is underway, and again, it is hammering it down in La Plata. This could be a very, very interesting match. Oh, we finally have a highlight. I didn't think we were going to get one, and it could be a goal as well. Pavoni with the shot. He's hit the post I think that's the first highlight of the game really despite the stats saying we've had a few shots on goal here we are again with Pisculici out to the edge of the box to Laba who fires it in and it is his first goal for the club what a hit from Matthias Laba and 27 minutes into the Superliga season and Pisculici is becoming a vital member of the team isn't he but what a hit from Matthias Laba and a brilliant start away at our city rivals. This would be a brilliant, brilliant way to uh, kick off the season. Winning at the home of your, well, you're probably your most hated rivals. Here's Laba again breaking into the box. Oh, what a ball to Piscolici. And it's gone away. Did it, He went for the corner in the end. Bit of confusion there. Here's Estevez. Piscolici, who's having a massive impact already in this match and already in this season. We saw him get a couple of goals, of course. Um, it was a penalty and a free kick, wasn't it? He is the free kick master. They are brilliant free kick taker. Piscolici, if you're in South America, get on this guy. He might only last a season or two. But what a player. Oh, and what a goal. Sebastian Leto has headed in. And it's 1-1. A big thundering cross. Um, it was Dario Conca who had the ball here, out to Rosales, and a big up and under cross. Look at that, the height on that, and how are you leaving a man like Sebastian Leto unmarked six yards out? Evangelista with the throw to the goal scorer, Laba. Evangelista again making ground, and it's with Piscolici now. He's driven it wide. There's been goals in the other game, you can see there. Belgrano losing at home to Tajerez. Um, it's been an eventful game there. Tajerez has scored twice, missed a penalty. Uh, so they are in front. We are 1-1, which on the face of it isn't a bad result because it's the, keep harping on about it. it's the first game of the season. It's a derby, but we desperately need to um, to put a, put a performance in, get a message out there. Um, 
the assistant saying that the performance was disappointing. It wasn't. We've been the better team. Just keep going because it hasn't been an awful performance at all. I think they scored their only shot and goal, um, or it was their only shot and goal at the time. It's been fine. We've done well. We've played well. We've been a better team. We just need to make it count now, don't we? Um, the goal kick taken long there. Mello pulls it out of the air, drives in field, gives it to Leto. The shot is tame. And Duhar saves. Um, we've had 10 shots. We've had a bit more of the ball. Um, but they are coming into the game a lot more now. Their first shot was their first shot on goal was their goal. So they've definitely had a few shots since then. They've really come into the game. They're still with their 4 4 1 1. Here's Artemelo to Ayala. Uh, Melo again. And it's headed in by Conker. It's over the bar, but we really are on the back foot at the minute. Conker with the free kick. Luca Rodriguez heads it away and then picks up his own clearance before launching it towards Pavoni. But it's back with Gymnasia at the back and a direct ball forward and Leto's in. Oh, he went to clip it over and Duhar, didn't he? But. The veteran goalkeeper did not fall for it. And here's Estevez with the free kick and Arias holds on. So it's still 2-1 to Tajerez in the other game against Belgrano. We have one more substitute to make. I think we're going to do it now. And that substitute is 17-year-old Delan Veron, Diane Veron. Um, he's, as I say, 17, but he looks a prospect's five-star potential ability. He's reasonably quick, but he's not the most physical. Very short at 177, uh, but he's got really good passing, good vision, good work rate. Decisions are good. First touch is really good. He should be a really top player. Um, so I'm happy to have him in and around the first team squad. Happy to have him uh, coming on for 15 minutes or something here. You never know. He could make that, that telling pass that gets us our noses back in front in the final few minutes. Say has with the free kick and it goes. It's cleared away and Ayala can launch the ball forward. That was aimless. And it's back with Mauricio Rosales. And that is an awful pass. And it's going to be an attack for Gimnasia, is it? It's out on the left here with Rosales. Oh, Rod Luca Rodriguez got back to that well. And here's Artiaga forward for Pavoni. Mariano Pavoni to Sejas. Get the ball in. He does into a good area. And it's back with us now. And it's gone in. And I think it's another own goal. It is. It's an own goal in stoppage time. I do not care. They all count. But definitely, definitely something is wrong with FM19 because the the rate of own goals is becoming quite alarming now. This is ridiculous. I think we've had like three in our last five games now. Absolutely mental. We haven't scored one yet though. Um, they've always been for us and that was a big looping cross. I thought there was something going to come from it there. Um, way, way over the stoppage time that we should have played. So come on, ref. I don't know why we've gone way over a minute. I, they're allowed a shot in. Uh, I think the offside was up, and that is it. It's all over, but we played so far beyond the two minutes that were allotted. Uh, we've won the game through a Manuel Guanini own goal. It seemed rather chaotic, didn't it? But who cares? It's 2-1. It's three big points on our league debut at the home of our rivals. Again, I have to stress that. Uh, it, you've just got to say, uh, just going to say, good win, boys. Well done. The same as the game against Blooming. It was a good win. We don't need to get carried away. It's early days, but things are looking quite good to start with. Three out of the four games on the Friday night then have ended with away wins and 2-1 away wins Tajerez held on against Belgrano he also had Huracan win 2-1 at Vélez Sarsfield Newell's Old Boys were the only team to win at home, they beat Tigre 1-0, what we're going to do is just to round off the video we're going to just fast forward through so that everybody's played one match um, because I don't like the look of that league table with all those zeros everyone has now played an Early leaders are River and Independiente. River beat Lanús 4-1. Independiente beat Rosario Central 3-0. The big news of the first round is that Boca Juniors lost to Argentinos Juniors 4-3. That's a big, big defeat already for Boca, uh, who are odds-on to win the league, really. They're, they're the dominant team in 
uh, Argentinian football right now. River, of course, had their relegations a few years ago and just they just haven't managed to get back to the level that they once were. And it is Boca who are the dominant force at the minute. Argentinos Juniors were predicted to finish way down the table. So that is a massive, massive result. Um, but yeah, that is the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to smash that like button. Hit subscribe if uh, this series interests you and you think you're going to enjoy it. Turn on those notifications as well so you don't miss a video. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at GamerJamesFM. I also have a WordPress site um, where I'm going to be blogging about a save I have with Aston Villa. First post is in progress at the minute. The link for the blog will be in the description, so make sure you jump on that as well. Um, and I will see you... Actually, should we have a look? You know, that was one of the slickest outros I've done. Um, and we haven't had a look at this schedule, have we? <laughs> so we've got that We've got that blooming second leg coming up. Obviously not going to do that on camera now. The plan, I think, is to do that San Martin de Tucumán game. Um, just get a couple of games done off camera, then do this San Martin game. Because I really want to do the Newell's game on camera as well. But I don't want to do too many games off camera. Because I think it just makes videos too long. I think, yeah. And I also think it gets me out of the routine of recording as well. If I'm recording every couple of games, you guys get more videos. And I think, I think that's a good thing. Um, so yeah, we're going to do San Martin in the next video. Newell's in the video after that. Then I think it's got to be the trip to Independiente because that's just such a huge match. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Remember to do everything that I said earlier and I will see you soon for the next episode. Thanks for watching. Adios.